Hello, and welcome to the TI Precision Lab series on current sense amplifiers. My name is Peter Elia, and I'm an applications engineer in the current and position sensing product line. In this video, we will discuss and analyze the use of input filters and how input resistance leads to error with current sense amplifiers. As a review, total current sensing error is largely due to inherent device errors such as CMRR and offset. However, when significantly large input resistors are placed at the input pins, there will be a large increase in gain and offset errors for many current sense amplifiers. Overall, an input filter will decrease gain and add error. For most current sense amplifiers, there exists an input bias stage that allows the device to operate at very high common mode voltages independent of the supply voltage. The bias stage usually siphons some common mode input bias current from the bus voltage to partially power the CSA. This can be seen with the input bias current versus VCM plot in the datasheet, where the bias current will jump once the common mode voltage exceeds the supply voltage. In this plot, the common mode IB jumps once VCM begins passing 5 volts because the supply voltage during the test was 5 volts. The input bias stage also has a relatively low differential input resistance in the range of a few kilo ohms, which contrasts the high input impedance of classical instrumentation amplifiers. The differential input resistance of the current sense amplifiers will create a differential input bias current that flows into one pin and out of the other. The differential input current can usually be seen in the datasheet, where the input voltage vSense is swept and the input bias currents are measured. From this plot, you could determine the input bias stage's resistance by calculating the change in vSense divided by the change in IB+. Here are some examples of current sense amplifier topologies. On the left, we have the low input impedance architectures where input differential resistance is in the range of a few kilo ohms. Given the positioning and the low differential impedance of their input bias stage, these devices will experience the highest error due to input filters. The INA-185 and INA-281 are some examples of these devices. On the top right is a capacitively coupled input device where the input bias stage is comprised of switching capacitors that result in a much higher input resistance. Devices with this type of input bias stage include the INA-190, the INA-191, and the INA-186. These are the recommended devices when the circuit needs an input filter or the device needs to be measure microamps of current. The bottom right diagram represents an architecture where there is no input bias stage at the input pins and the output is a current. Device transconductance is set by the precision trimmed internal resistor. An example of this architecture is the INA-139. Here are two ways to model a current sense amplifier for input filter error analysis. Input bias resistance, R bias, generates the majority of the input differential bias current, while common mode input bias current sources create the common bias current and are dependent upon the input common mode voltage of the device. Input offset current IOS, or also referred to as IIO, equals the difference between the input bias currents for each input pin. The absolute value of internal resistors in the device can vary by plus or minus 20% over process variation. Device gain accuracy is maintained because the ratio of the feedback resistor RFB over Rint is trimmed to establish an accurate gain. Thus, the variation in the ratio of RFB over Rint is the device's gain error from the datasheet. Please note that resistor RR is not technically a feedback resistor, but it is the same resistor as RFB. Thus, in the aim of simplicity, RR will be referred to as RFB for the rest of the analysis. Let us analyze the input filter error for the INA-185A4, which is a current sense amplifier with 200 volts per volt gain 
and 0.25% gain error over temperature. The system conditions are sensing current from 100 milliamps to 2 amps with a 10 milliohm shunt on a 20 volt bus rail. It has been observed that the load current can be very noisy, but a clean measurement is necessary. The designer decides that a differential input filter with a 1.6 kHz cutoff frequency will sufficiently dampen the signal noise before being amplified by the INA185. The value for the input differential capacitance is limited to a max 0.47 microfarad for capacitors of the C0G slash NP0 dielectric, which is the preferred for the system because of its characteristically low tolerance. Thus, the designer needs 100 ohm input resistors to achieve the required cutoff frequency. Note that there is no maximum input differential capacitance value for current sense amplifiers. The first thing to do is to create a basic discrete model in a SPICE simulation environment. You can use the datasheet to determine rint, rfb, our bias, input offset current, and common mode input bias currents at the system bus voltage of 20 volts. Since this is a DC analysis, the model can also use an ideal op amp that does not need a power supply. One might wonder, why not just use the INA185 macro model? One reason is that many models are behavioral based and not transistor based. While these behavioral blocks make it easier to individually model device characteristics, they may not capture the true input resistance and device topology. The second and more important reason is it will be easier to determine the maximum gain error with the input filter, which will become clear further into the analysis. To determine the new gain, the model does not need the input offset current, common mode input bias current, nor the bus voltage sources. Removing these sources allows you to perform one DC simulation to determine new gain without needing to consider offset errors. All that is needed is to divide the output voltage by the shunt voltage. After simplifying the circuit, we simulate the typical gain of 178.57 volts per volt, which is smaller than the device's inherent gain of 200 volts per volt. And this makes sense. The overall circuit gain will always decrease when adding input resistors. Of course, a designer can theoretically calculate the gain and in many data sheets, we include the equation to do so. To use this equation, simply multiply the gain error factor with the device gain. Here, we calculate 178.57 volts per volt, which matches our simulated gain value exactly. The next step is to determine the gain variance, which is the most involved aspect of the analysis because it requires understanding the corner cases associated with device variation. It is important to remember that the gain calculated previously is a typical value based upon typical resistor values mandated by designers. When using an input filter, there will be some maximum and minimum possible gains that will set the new gain error variance of the circuit. Simplifying this process is important to quickly evaluate whether a circuit will meet system error requirements or not. First, let's recall the three equations that define internal resistor variation. Let's consider what scenario would cause maximum gain. Well, if we assume all resistors increase by the positive 20% maximum possible variation, this would increase input resistance and thus restore some of the gain originally lost. In addition to this, we can assume that the device already has the maximum positive datasheet gain error, which is positive 0.25% for the INA185A4. Finally, we can then assume the worst case negative 1% variation of the input filter resistors. Using these three steps, we run through the calculations and add 20% to RFB and R bias by multiplying them by 1.2, yielding 600 kilo ohm and 3 kilo ohms respectively. We can then calculate Rint using the gain equation. This yields an Rint 
of 2.99252 kiloohms. Finally, we need to decrease the input filter resistors by 1%. Now perform a DC simulation and determine the gain error. We calculate the maximum worst case gain to be 182.42 volts per volt. Maximum gain error is relative to the typical gain of 178.57 volts per volt. Thus, we calculate the final maximum gain error variation as positive 2.16%. Similarly to the last slide, we can now determine the low end of the gain error variance. To minimize the gain, we will decrease all internal resistors by 20%, which will lower the input impedance of the device. Then, we will assume the device has internally a worst case gain error of negative 0.25%. Finally, increase the input filter resistors by 1%. Now perform a DC simulation and determine the gain error. We calculate the minimum worst case gain of 173.27 volts per volt. Comparing this gain to the typical gain, we calculate a final minimum gain error of negative 2.97%. Inserting an input filter will also generate some offset that will be dependent upon the input impedance and the input bias currents. We can simplify the derivation for the new offset by determining the effective input impedance looking into the device. Since the internal amplifier's inputs are ideally a virtual short, the input resistance can be calculated as R bias in parallel with 2 times R int. Now we can analyze the circuit shown without the amplifier or feedback resistors. Using Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws on the device front end, we can determine a system of equations. Combining these equations and setting the load to 0 amps, we determine the following equation. We can see that the mismatch in the input resistors will contribute the majority of the offset error, but input offset current and input differential resistance will also contribute. From this equation, we can reason that the largest positive offset will occur when RF1 is less than RF2, and input offset current is negative, while the largest negative offset will occur when RF1 is greater than RF2, and an input offset current is positive. R diff and offset are positively correlated, so the max R diff will generate worst case gain. The max R diff assumes positive 20% tolerance for R bias and R int. Thus, R diff max is 3 kilo ohms in parallel with 2 times 3 kilo ohms, yielding a 2 kilo ohm effective input resistance. If we plug these values into the offset equation, we calculate the exact values determined from running the DC simulation, which are approximately positive 187 microvolts and negative 185 microvolts. Now let's calculate the total worst case offset. The initial offset of the device is plus or minus 100 microvolts at the 12 volt datasheet testing condition. The 20 volt bus voltage in this example will add a maximum amount of 41 microvolts offset due to the worst case CMR of 106 dB. Adding all of these together yields a possible maximum offset within the range of positive 328 microvolts and negative 326 microvolts. So after analysis, it is clear that the offset and gain error will increase dramatically with the input filter resistors greater than 10 ohms. Here's an overview of the total error. If we repeat the previous analysis, but with input filter resistors of 0.1% tolerance, we see a dramatic improvement in the offset error, but a small improvement in the gain error. This is because offset error is dominated by RF tolerance and the level of common mode input bias current. Gain error is dominated by the process variation of the internal resistor's absolute values. An engineer can consider calibrating the circuit. However, the variation of the circuit parameters over temperature must be considered. The datasheet specifications 
for offset voltage, common mode input bias currents, and the device gain error are usually very stable over temperature, and this can be verified in most data sheets. The temperature coefficient of the internal resistors is not reported in data sheets, but for many devices can be very stable at a maximum plus or minus 30 ppm per degrees Celsius, based upon silicon chromium process technology. Given that all the resistors for a single device will drift in the same direction, the error due to temperature coefficient contributes small gain error of positive 50 milli percent to negative 70 milli percent over the entire operating ambient temperature range of the INA185A4. The temperature coefficient of the filter resistors RF will of course depend upon the component chosen. So let's calibrate the circuit, but first add a 1 volt reference voltage source to the ref pin of the INA185A4, as this makes calibration more efficient. Calibrating out the offset requires simply reading the differential output voltage when there is no load current, which is possible because the output is biased into the linear region with the reference voltage source. Calibrating gain requires a two-point calibration at two known current levels. Thus, this is more difficult calibration method than the offset calibration. In this example, the load is set to exactly one amp. Thus, the calibrated gain is the slope of the differential output for when the load is zero amps and one amps. We can now solve for the complete calibrated gain and offset equation. This calibration was done at one temperature, and thus as the temperature changes, air will accrue according to the temperature coefficients of the resistors and device specifications. That concludes this video. Thank you for watching. Please try the quiz to check your understanding of the content. For more information and videos on current sense amplifiers, please visit ti.com forward slash current sense.